Hello, it is great to be here today. Thank you very much, Werner. So, uh, hi there, I'm Jeff. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Twilio. I'm a software developer, but more than that, I consider myself to be a software person. See, it's not that I write code, it's that I like using software to build competitive advantage in the businesses that I'm involved in. Because I believe that software is a mindset. It is not a skill set. And I've used that mindset throughout my career. See, before starting Twilio, I had started three companies, and I was one of the first product managers at Amazon Web Services, back when Andy hired all the PMs. Hey, Andy. Um, and after Amazon, I set out to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I looked back at my three previous businesses and realized that I had two things in common between all of them. First was that we were using that software mindset. The agility of software to enable competitive differentiation. Sprint after sprint, listening to our customers, and shipping an iteratively better product. That is the superpower of software. But I also realized that at each of these companies, we had needed communications to make a great customer experience. And when we turned to the legacy communications industry to find out how we should build the things we had in mind, we got the same answer every time. Sure, wire up all these copper wires to your data center, rack up a bunch of telco gear, and then bring in professional services to come and integrate that whole thing for you. And that'll take millions of dollars and take 24 months before we can launch anything. I said, wow, that is the complete opposite of that software mindset. And so in 2008, we started Twilio to solve this problem to bring communications into the era of software and out of its legacy based in hardware and physical networks. And we had a mission. That mission is to fuel the future of communications because communications is going to be powered by software. And we do this with a product we invented called a cloud communications platform. See, we have all the building blocks for communication that you would need to build any kind of communications use case you can imagine. Programmable voice, messaging, video, wireless, authentication, and many more. And you can use these building blocks to assemble just about any use case you can imagine. And if you've never used Twilio yourself, that's OK. You probably use Twilio all the time, and you don't even know it. Because when you hail an Uber and you call the driver from inside the app, you're actually using Twilio. If you make a dinner reservation at OpenTable, and you get a text message when your table is ready, you're using Twilio. If you get a two-factor authentication code texted to you from Box or many other online services, you're actually using Twilio. That's because these companies are also using that power of software to build a better product every day. And you know, we started in 2008 helping companies in nearly every industry you can imagine migrate workloads of communication from the legacy into this new way in the cloud and using software. And every time we go through a big scaling effort and we think, wow, that was hard, guess what? It just gets harder. Because there's more and more and more workloads of communication that are migrating to the cloud and to software. And new use cases and new workloads getting invented all the time. In fact, one example is a category we call cloud scale communications. If you think about the gold standard of enterprise legacy communications, it's the call center. And the largest call centers on the planet, run by the likes of American Express, other financial services companies, they're on the scale of about 8,000 agents, or the biggest ones there are. They handle about 100 million interactions annually. This is the pinnacle of legacy communications. But today, this has all changed. Because the on-demand economy has changed the nature of what it means to be cloud scale. You don't have 8,000 agents, you have half a million drivers talking to their riders. And you don't have 100 million interactions annually, you have billions of interactions annually. This is cloud scale communications. And that old way where you'd go and rack up PBXs, you can't get to cloud scale by racking up boxes. You know, it used to be you'd, you'd put this thing in a closet and you'd wait five years to amortize it before you could do anything new. That doesn't help you when you're scaling rapidly. That doesn't help you when you're trying to reach customers all around the world in a very rapid fashion. That doesn't help with your velocity of innovation. In fact, you get no agility whatsoever from the legacy approach, and it's only as reliable as you make it yourself. But as software people, we know that agility is the most important thing. That's why at Twilio, 
We shipped production updates of Twilio almost 8,000 times in the last year. Almost, you know, more than 30 times a day, Twilio gets better. But the thing is, some people believe the reason why you'd, you know, not be agile is because you need reliability. But that's a misconception. Because with software and processes and smart systems, you can build agility with resiliency. And that's how Twilio approaches this. So despite the fact that we shipped 8,000 times in the last year, we have five nines availability of our API. And that's the power of software. You can have it all. And we know this is important to you as a company founded by developers for developers. We have over one million developers in our ecosystem. And the apps built by these developers process over 100 billion annual API requests to power those communications. And those communications have reached over 1 billion devices around the planet. And that's the power of platforms working together. Since day one of Twilio, back in 2008, we've been building on top of Amazon Web Services. And we're working together with AWS to take on 150 years of legacy communications. Like many of you, we started back in 2008 launching our first uh, EC2 machine, and now we boot over 100,000 instances annually. But it doesn't stop with EC2 because as Amazon has shipped, we've adopted many of their services, Kinesis, ELBs, availability zones all around the world, Lambda, Redshift, Dynamo, Direct Connect, to build a better product all the time. As we've expanded our operations and our customer base globally, AWS has allowed us to expand much faster than we ever could have before. But it's not just Twilio using AWS. AWS is also using Twilio. If you use the simple notification service, those SMS messages are powered by Twilio. If you use Amazon Lex, which they launched yesterday, we're really excited to be a part of that solution. And we're really excited to announce some upcoming collaborations soon. And we power this because of the super network that we've built around AWS. Now, I say it's super not just because it's amazing, which we kind of think it is, but really more in the literal sense of the word super. It's a network that is sitting above the carriers of the world, and it optimizes them with software. See, we've taken the AWS network, and we've deployed our software into all these regions and all these AZs all around the world, and then we've interconnected that software with hundreds of carriers and expanded the AWS edge. And we're growing that list of carriers every day. And then we use data and feedback from our customers to continually optimize the performance of this network for quality, for delivery, for latency, for every text message and phone call that traverses our network. It's a flywheel that's getting better every single day. See, what we've done is we've turned AWS into a low latency, adaptively learning, globally interconnected communications cloud. And coupled with our programmable communications APIs, it is a powerful toolkit to power any kind of communications workload you can imagine. But the point is, in 2016, you no longer get points for merely using servers. You only get points for serving your users. Companies that win are companies that ship software. Thank you very much.